Hi, my name is David and I'm here at Splitboard HQ. And today we're gonna to go over how to pack for a multi-day splitboarding trip. There's different types of multi-day trips that people go on into the backcountry. It can be anything from where you might be going in and staying in a tent, or you might have accommodations where you're staying in like a hut and you're going from hut to hut, or you might even be getting helicoptered into a space where you're gonna be dropped off and food will be provided for you. So depending on each of those scenarios, there's different nuances that would change what you're gonna bring for those trips. So for this, I'm going to do um, what I would pack if I was doing a multi-day hot trip, where things like a stove would be provided, there'd be some pots and pans there for me, and fuel, and a sleeping space. Um, not necessarily a sleeping bag or pillow, but like a sleeping pad for me to sleep on. I tend to break my gear into what I consider essential and non-essential or the nice to haves. In the essential category, I like to break it down even further into like basic gear, clothing, safety gear, and food. And so let's kind of dive into each one of those separately. So for your basic gear, obviously for a split boarding trip, you're going to need a split board, bindings, skins, boots, and poles. Now, for also for a multi-day trip, you're going to need a backpack. So I typically use a smaller backpack for my daily commuter, but for uh, a multi-day trip, I tend to use about a 45, 55 liter backpack so that I can fit things like a sleeping bag into that. So that's what I would consider um, the basic gear category. Now for clothing, uh, when it comes to clothing on a multi-day trip in the backcountry in the mountains, all of us know that layering is key. This is especially the case when you're out for multiple days because weather can change from day to day, especially if it's you've been out for like three or four days, things can be dramatically different. Making sure you have like really solid base layers like long underwear, uh, merino shirts, things like that that uh, wick away the moisture and tend to shed that, but also breathe dry quickly and keep you warm are key. Stay away from anything cotton. That's kind of a general rule of thumb for any time that you're out in the backcountry. I like to bring neck tubes, some mitts. I tend to always have like extra thick mitts that I can uh, put on if it does get really cold. Um, outer Gore-Tex layer for pants, uh, jacket. Uh, this is a piece that I added to my equipment the last couple of years. It's a vest and it's made from merino wool and I find that it dries out really quickly and breathes really nice. And this is often what I'm, I find that I'm skinning in most days lately. Always have a, a down puffy with me packed away in my pack just in case I need it and a helmet. That's kind of my, my go-to along with a pair of sunglasses and goggles for clothing. The basics of safety are going to be your beacon probe shovel. Uh, I like to often bring, uh, for digging a, a snow profile, I like to bring a, uh, a snow ax with me and uh, I also consider an essential piece to have a first aid kit. Within that first aid kit, you always wanna make sure that you have uh, some sort of space blanket that you can tuck yourself into in an emergency situation. Kind of aside from the basics, um, for a multi-day trip, it's gonna be nice to have uh, a radio with you uh, to potentially tune into weather stations and, and have those pre-programmed in so that you can listen to see if there is weather. InReach can also be a really good device in case uh, someone in your group ends up in an emergency situation, you can call for a rescue. And some other kind of miscellaneous pieces that I like to have along are, you know, duct tape, zip ties, uh, Swiss Army knife, um, and I think these are amazing to have in your backpack. I have stuff like this in my pack all the time. You can pick these up on splitboardhq.com. This is a backcountry kit specifically for Spark R&D bindings. If you have hard boot bindings or Caracorn bindings or something else that you're using, there's also things like that that you can find on the website as well. Uh, I always have a ski strap. You never know when you're going to need one of these to hold a skin on, hold a binding or a boot or something together, possibly even a body part. These are essential, always in my pack to have. Uh, for a multi-day trip, because you're going to be out uh, like in a hut or maybe in a tent, uh, you're going to be out at night. And so uh, making sure that you have a headlamp with you is also really essential. And it's always a good idea, especially on a multi-day trip, to take a compass and either some sort of guidebook, I tend to mostly stick to a map, but a guidebook or map, something that is like paper, because sometimes when you're out for multiple days, batteries die in extreme cold temperatures. Um, 
if you're relying simply on GPS, things like that can um, can fail you when you're in the backcountry, especially for multiple days. And so to reduce your exposure to those risks, having a compass in a whiteout and a map is really a good thing to have in your pack. On to food. So um, I like to break it into obviously breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then however many days you're going out for. So let's say we're going for like a four day trip. So uh, obviously you need breakfast, lunch, and dinner for four days, but you actually don't when you break it down because you typically are only going, you're going to need lunches for four days, but you're not going to need that first day breakfast and you're not going to often need that last day dinner. So you need four lunches and then three breakfasts and three dinners. So that's, that's kind of my rule of thumb is like whatever you have, breakfast and dinner, knock one off on each end. It is nice, especially when you are going out into the backcountry if you're somewhere fairly remote and weather can change on you to have an extra dinner or an extra little bit of cache of food just in case you get trapped somewhere. That's often a, a good plan for something to have in your pack. For the food itself, I try to keep it pretty simple. I use instant oatmeal. Um, I like these, uh, these Alpine Star instant coffee. You can just like stir it up, throw it in a cup and away you go. For lunch, I tend to do things like cheese, pepperoni sticks, bars, some, some honey stingers, stuff like that. And for dinner, again, I like to keep it simple and just go with uh, like something like a backpacker's pantry or something like that with a dehydrated meal. Uh, obviously, you need a water bottle. That would kind of case what I would consider the essentials. Now we're going to dive into the the, uh, the the less essential stuff. Sorry, actually, I, I forgot these. These are these are essential. You have to have toilet paper, and you probably don't need a giant roll like this, but it's fun. Maybe you do. Um, and uh, deodorant and uh, uh, toothpaste and sunscreen, especially if you're on a glacier for multiple days. Sunscreen is a really good idea to have on you. Uh, Non-essential stuff. Um, hot booties, uh, these are a nice to have for me. They're, they're amazing though to get out of your boots and throw something else on while your boots dry overnight. You can like pull your liners out and air them out. Uh, I tend to cruise around in these and if I go outside uh, and the snow is deep, I'll just throw on like my, my soft boots over top of that, just the, the shells and that works really well. Uh, a hat can be really nice to block the sun out if it tends to be sunny. Um, I would put this as a questionable essential thing. If you think that you might run into uh, really cold conditions for any, any dur duration of your trip, having hand warmers could be, I would say, a part of your essential safety kit as well. Also nice to have something that I bring on all my multi-day trips now is some sort of power bank and you gotta make sure you bring the cords to be able to charge the right stuff. So if you're charging like a cell phone or a camera, or like say you are charging up your inReach or your radio or something, make sure you have all the right cords for that. And then snacks, I like to bring popcorn um, and like some little drink things, gels, cookies, things like that. Uh, a rouge block cord is a nice to have. You can use them to like string things together if you had to with the, the metal cable. Um, it's also nice for if you are, if you do get into a situation where you want to, where you want to actually do like an extended column test or you want to do a roof block test, then you have that with you as well. And then again, specifics, like let's say you were doing like a multi-day glacier trip or something where you were going to be like bringing like ice axes or screws, you might have like specific equipment that you bring for that. So things, things that might fall into that category might be like a rope. Uh, mountaineering axe or climbing axes, um, some boot crampons that you can throw on, or maybe some ski crampons or both in some situations. And if you have access to have a lightweight harness, these are generally better to go with. Uh, it's nice to have the ones that you can slip on uh, with your with your skis on where you can uh, just lace it through. Prusik cords, uh, anchor material, these things are all kind of uh, miscellaneous things depending on the type of trip that you might be doing that you might want to have on hand. That kind of that kind of covers everything. That's your your basics. Uh, that's your essential gear of everything that you would want to have. A little bit of the nice to haves. Um, I want to thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, you can follow us here on YouTube uh, for more gear reviews, backcountry beta, and information on the splitboarding world and the splitboarding community. Thanks, and see you again next time.